Hello, Genie OK Boomer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Or maybe, well, I should say, welcome to this week's vlog. This is why, if you've been following the vlog for a while, you know I've been doing them five days a week, and therefore, welcome to today's vlog. But a couple of weeks ago, I announced that I was ending the vlog because I have other things I want to do. I wasn't getting much uh, viewership for the vlog. But I seem to have struck a, a nerve a few weeks ago. I did one on a military exercise, a, a war game involving the uh, U.S. Marines and the Royal Marines, uh, United Kingdom and some other countries. That seems to have gotten a lot of views. I was actually very surprised. But since doing that vlog. I don't know if that's the reason, but I've gotten several new subscribers since I've done that vlog, even though I haven't done a, a new vlog in a couple of weeks. I don't know why, but having gotten these new subscribers, I, well, I did reserve the right when I ended the vlog to weigh in every so often if there was something that I wanted to talk about, just kind of on an ad hoc basis. But I'm going to try to do one a week, record one on Friday with not so many exhibits and photos and things that would take a lot of time. And then you would see it on Monday. I'm going to try to do one a week because I'm starting to feel an obligation to these. Well, I'm not starting. I actually do. I feel an obligation to these new subscribers. They subscribe. Obviously, they want to be alerted to new vlogs. So I should do a new vlog. Otherwise, uh, they'll be disappointed. And I hope, by the way, if you are subscribing because of that uh, United Kingdom uh, U.S. Marines War Games video. If I'm getting, I know I got a few comments from um, British subjects commenting. So I, I just want to, I hope you'll stick around because that was a kind of a one-off. I do, well, I do do international vlogs, uh, uh, geopolitical vlogs, and I do mostly the Middle East when I go overseas, but the vast majority are U.S. politics, which is what I'm going to talk about today. So I, I hope you find it interesting and come back for more and share the videos. And that brings us now to today's subject. The Democrats, uh, I don't know how much you've heard about this overseas, but the Democrats are trying to, uh, well, I'll use the, the correct phrase for me. I'm a conservative, by the way. You always keep that in mind when you evaluate whatever I say. So they are trying to ram through some very dramatic uh, changes in basically the American way of life. They want to, uh, well, I'm not going to go into all the details today. If you're an American, you've been following this for a long time. If you're a, a Brit, I would suggest you watch or, or you go on the website for the Daily Mail. They cover, uh, they seem to be a British paper that covers U.S. Uh, events, uh, including U.S. politics. But they, they want to, uh, well, they wanted to ram through what they were calling a $1.7 trillion uh, stimulus package, even though the coronavirus emergency is over. It is definitely over in this country, at least. Uh, I guess not in Australia, where they're putting people in concentration camps if they don't get vaccinated. So, uh, you know, how wonderful for what's supposed to be a democracy. I, I was really surprised. But coming back to the United States, they, um, it's supposed to be a one. They want to, for instance, uh, a, a permanent child. What they're aiming at is a universal basic income. That's basically it. They want to, throwing away everything that Bill Clinton did with a work to welfare program where you could get some um, federal aid if you're facing hard times. But you have to work. You have to work even if it's, if it's some kind of menial job. And the Democrats now just want to give money for child uh, care credits and uh, various, and they want to expand Medicare program, which is our, our national um, health care. Um, well, it, it's aid for, for older people, well, like me, if you're over 65 or, or over 67 now, I believe it is. Anyways, the, um, the point is they, they, 
tried to finagle the financing. Ten years of taxes, but they were saying that this program would only last for a year. So uh, they're trying to make us believe that the program will expire in a year and then there will be taxes for nine more years to pay for this program that that uh, 10 years from now they would be paying taxes for a program that ended nine years ago that's not going to happen as ronald reagan said the closest thing to immortality on this earth is a federal program especially one that gives away free money so the idea is that they would establish the program but then uh, a year from now when it's supposed to expire the republicans would be even if they if they're in power they would be too afraid to uh, to uh, end the program and then there would be more taxes to pay to keep the program going on forever so the republicans being very smart they asked the congressional budget office which is uh, the organization the part of congress uh nonpartisan that scores uh, these programs, what are they really going to cost? What, are, what is the impact? They can only score what is given to them. In other words, the, the Democrats said that the, the, these programs, or at least one of them, expires in one year, paid for nine years and uh, uh, ten years of taxes. Does, does it balance? And, and there's no deficit. Well, it turns out even with that, there's a $367 uh, $367 billion deficit over 10 years. But nobody seriously believes that the program would end after one year, but the, the CBO can't do anything about that. They have to score on what's given to them. So the Republicans, very smart, asked the CBO to score the same program, but with the assumption or the same bill, uh, they call it the Building Back or the Build Back Better um, bill, or um, Build Back Bankrupt bill is what the Republicans and the critics call it. But the idea was that the Republicans asked the, the, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, to score that same um, legislation as if on the assumption that these programs would not end after a year, but that they would be permanent. And it turns out this program that was supposed to cost $1.7 trillion uh, actually costs about $5 trillion dollars which has put the put the kibosh on the whole program because or the the whole entire legislation because of uh, well, there are, I believe there are several moderate Democrats who, who could not would not vote for this thing. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Kirsten Cinema, whom I will talk about in a future vlog, by the way, but probably. But the, the main uh, culprit, for want of a better word, using uh, the point of view of the Democrats, is Joe Manchin, a senator from West Virginia. He wants a CBO the estimate to be based on, or the cost to be based on these programs being permanent. And because the, the Senate right now is split 50-50, a single senator can stop the bill. And that's what Joe Manchin is doing. He's refusing to vote for it. He's worried about inflation. He wants inflation, which is currently running about um, about 7% the consumer prices and almost 10%, 9.6%, I believe it is, of the, um, the wholesale price index. So that's going to show up eventually in, in the, the retail prices. So he wants to wait and, and see, wait for inflation to come down and just hold off on, on this bill. And therefore, uh, Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, uh, Democratic majority leader of the Senate, he was pushing to vote on this bill by Christmas. Not going to happen. Not going to happen, but what I, the main subject for today is Joe Manchin. The Democrats have this big problem with Joe Manchin because one senator, as I said, can stop everything that Democrats want to do, except, uh, well, yeah, they, he can, even through reconciliation, he can, one senator can stop everything, and that's what Joe Manchin is doing, or at least he's the point person on this who's willing to go on the record, say, I, I, I'm not going to vote for this, and that stops the whole thing. So they have a big problem with him, and I'm going to help the Democrats. I'm going to help the Democrats solve their Joe Manchin problem. How do you solve your Joe Manchin problem? Get him to vote for your legislation. And it's very simple. Change the legislation 
legislation, change this this bill, which isn't necessary anyhow. And uh, I'll just give you a, the simple explanation. What they don't understand about Joe Manchin or refuse, they expect the Democrats, which happens in the House very often. Nancy Pelosi, the, the Speaker of the House Democrat, pressures these moderate uh, representatives to vote for far left legislation and then they lose their elections and they, they're thrown out of office but they're so afraid uh, and they should know that's going to happen but they're so afraid of Nancy Pelosi that they vote with her and then they lose their their uh, jobs which is what would happen to Joe Manchin if he votes for this thing because he is a senator from West Virginia. The other senator, there's two from, from every state if you're watching this over, uh, overseas. Uh, the other one is a senator is, uh, um, is a Republican. So he came out and he said he, he read the riot act basically to the Democrats. And he said, let me explain something to you. First of all, America is not a far left or even a left country. It's not even a center country. He said it's a center right country. And he's right. America um, philosophically, unfortunately, we have a, a liberal media. That's most of the media who don't re that don't reflect the the true the true philosophy of the country. So they suppress conservative news uh, and they they tout liberal uh, talking points, basically in their narratives. But thanks to the internet, the, the message gets through anyhow. And conservatives, uh, which is most of the country, uh, uh, are on the right or either independent, but it's mostly conservative independents or Republicans. They're getting it and. Um, that's what the one thing, one thing that Joe Manchin explained to them. America is a center right country. But the other thing uh, about Joe Manchin specifically, you have to remember or the Democrats need to keep in mind that he is a Democratic senator from a very, uh, very conservative state. How conservative? In the last election, the 2020 presidential election, Donald Trump got 68, I wrote it down here, 68.62%. Let's call it 69% of the vote. So they're crazy if they think that Joe Manchin is going to vote for something that uh, a state that voted 69% for uh, Donald Trump only uh, about a year ago is going to... Uh, He'd have to be crazy to do that. He would lose his job. He would not be reelected. So I would, um, this is the advice. This is my advice for my Democratic friends who I love dearly. We're all Americans, right? But if you want Joe Manchin's vote, kill that bill and just write a new bill that a center-right country would like. If you want Joe Manchin's vote, then write a bill that a state that voted 69% for uh, Donald Trump would like, voted 69% for the Republican would like, and surely will vote very strongly for the Republican candidate in 2024, whether it's... Uh, uh, whether it's Donald Trump or somebody else, probably uh, Ron DeSantis, I, I would say, though I, I fully expect Trump to run again. And DeSantis would be a fantastic vice president and be queued up to be president in uh, 2028, get elected two terms. That would be very fantastic. Given my age, if that happens, I may never live to see another Democratic president, which would be wonderful for me, but that's just my personal opinion. But that's my advice, and that's the vlog for this week. If you want Joe Manchin on, on board, then you have to understand that he understands the country better than you do, my, fellow, my friendly uh, Democratic uh, Democrats, my Democratic friends. He understands the country better than you do, and he knows his state. And if you want his vote, you have to get him on board with legislation that would appeal to the people of his state, whom he is supposed to be representing. Well, not whom he's supposed to be representing, but whom he is representing from every all of his actions and all of his statements. Good job, Joe Manchin, even though we're in different parties. I hope you'll 
come to your senses one day and join the, the Republican Party. As somebody uh, said uh, jokingly, but it's true, uh, there, there are two parties and one party likes you and one party hates you. And the party that hates you is your own party right now, the Democrats. The Republicans like you, so why don't you join the party that likes you? And he's conservative enough that he would get what the, the things that he wants he could get in a Republican Congress. Hell, they'll do anything for him. Are you kidding? Uh, somebody said, uh, another senator joked, well, we'll make you, uh, you can be chairman. If we take the Senate, you can be chairman of everything. In other words, all the committees, just joking. John Thune said he would, he asked him, he says he asked, um, he periodically asks uh, Joe Manchin, uh, could I come over and mow your lawn? That's, uh, anyways, that's enough for today. Thanks uh, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping to do one of these a week every month. I'll record them on Friday. You'll see them every Monday. It gives me the whole weekend to edit them. And that's it. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate the time that you spent with me. If you uh, have any comments, questions, suggestions for future topics, so you can put them in the comment section below the video. You could share the video with anybody you think would also like it. Uh, you could also subscribe, as so many people seem to have been doing the last couple weeks. And I would love to have even more subscribers. And you know what? In the comments, tell me what you would like me to talk about. And I will talk about what you want me to talk about. If you don't tell me, then I, I have to uh, just, you know, just go by my own uh, desires of what I want to talk about. But I'm happy to talk about other subjects for other people. And finally, I hope that you'll, uh, well, almost finally, I hope you'll visit my music channel. I'm putting the link in the description. And then this is the final uh, wish that you come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. Look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.